Hey everyone, it's Isaac, and I'm here to let you know that I actually started a Kickstarter for my new book and film. I'm super excited about it. I want you to go check it out right now in the link in my description here. You're saying there's awesome rewards. The book is, and the film is about building father-son relationships. And even if you're not a father or a son, I think this is something really important to get involved with and encourage and support. So um, yeah, I'm super excited about the project and I love it no matter who you are get involved. Okay, I'll see you there. What does it mean to repent? If you spent practically any time in the scriptures, you're bound to come across the idea of repentance. This draws us to contemplate the question of what it truly means to repent. If you were to Google search, you would see an answer to the question. But if you're anything like me, this answer doesn't seem totally satisfactory. To answer this question, I packed up my equipment and hit the road. You know, when we think about repentance, uh, your mind may be taken back to the Old Testament when prophets were to, um, you know, declare to the Israelites, repent, repent. You may think back to uh, Jonah, who, who went to Nineveh. God sent him to Nineveh to tell the Ninevites to repent. In the New Testament, you may think of John the Baptist calling people to repentance. You know, when you think about repentance, what does it really mean? Sometimes we're a little bit fuzzy on the exact meaning of, okay, what, what is repentance here? What does that mean? Is it a one-time thing? Is it multi, is it a lifestyle of repentance? What does it mean? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And um, yeah, come along for the journey. I wanted to chat with my friend and associate pastor of my church, Chris Wettstein, about the meaning of repentance to begin our conversation. The basic uh, word in, in Hebrew that's translated as repent um, has to do with turning. So turning away from sin, turning away from what is wrong or what is evil, and turning to God. So I think that basic sense of turning is, is really valuable to understand what repentance is. And in the New Testament, the Greek word has to do with uh, changing of the mind. So it's not just a outward turning away from this action um, to do these actions, but it's a, an inward change, inward turning, you could say, to clarify. Um, so turning away from what is wrong, turning to God, uh, seeking to follow God in sincerity, that's, that's repentance in a sense. So some, the, it seems to me that that's a slightly different, maybe a, a, hmm. a very different definition from what we often hear is, just saying sorry like yeah just oh yeah, say yeah. Sorry, you know sure. like, repentance is just say sorry yeah and then that's good then you repent it just saying sorry um in a sense can be hard to read we're all familiar with uh you know famous people saying sorry after they get caught for something and uh we maybe we're familiar with our own experience too of saying sorry when we just know it's the right thing to do to say sorry because oh somebody's upset with me sorry you know you bumped into somebody and you say sorry but um, repentance is much more uh, meaningful than just saying sorry. It's uh, something that involves an actual turning of the heart. And so you have to think about repentance as a relational thing. Uh, in relationship to God and in relationship to other people, repentance isn't just saying sorry. There's a change of the heart that has to take place. Um, if we're going to be in a right relationship with God and in a right, right relationship with other people. An example of it would be Psalm 51, where David is convicted about his sin. He had sinned on multiple levels in, in a really big way, of course. He had committed adultery, he worked it out so that uh, Uriah was killed, so there was, he was trying to cover up his sin. He was in big trouble in terms of it was a big, obvious, scandalous sin. And Psalm 51 describes this uh, repentance. If you want to know what repentance is, that's a great psalm to look at. As I chatted with Pastor Chris, I asked him to explain some of the key components of repentance to help us develop a deeper understanding. One would be um, hating or despising sin, not um, loving your sin anymore. Whenever you've acted in a sinful way, whether that's through um, uh, a wrong kind of aggression or um, an out-of-bounds kind of lust or uh, whatever kind of way that you've acted in sin, in the moment it feels good, right? But repentance is a matter of having a distaste for that, uh, displeasure about your sin, uh, combined with 
a sense of wanting to follow God the way that you ought to. So it is a seeking after a new obedience, a seeking after a new way of life. And so it's not just that, oh, I, I really feel bad about how I gossiped that moment, but I want to actually make things right. I want to speak the truth in love. I want to speak um, in a way that helps people, not hurts people, for, in, for instance. So repentance looks like a turning away from what you did that was wrong to do what is right. And that comes out of a sense, an apprehension of God's mercy. The uh, Westminster Confession of Faith describes and defines repentance as involving an apprehension of God's mercy in Christ. So it's not just that I feel like, oh, God's going to judge me if I don't repent, but you also have a sense that God is a merciful God. He's holy and merciful, and I want to please him. I want to please him, and I have a sense that he is merciful to me. He's a father, and so I want to come back and uh, live the way I ought to be living. Oh, right. Is repentance just a one-time thing? Can you explain what No, uh, repentance has to be a way of life, an ongoing way of life. That's actually something that was... Uh, top of the list for Martin Luther when he was uh, putting out his 95 Thesis at the time of the Reformation. Repentance is an ongoing way of life. It's not just a one-time thing. And uh, that's clear in the Bible. You see instructions. It's not always just the word repent, but the meaning of repentance that's spelled out. Uh, we need to continually put off what is wrong, what is sinful, and put on the new way of life. And so this, this is an ongoing call to the Christian life. Putting off those habits and those ways of thinking that are wrong and to put on uh, a heart of compassion, a heart of love for God and for other people. Um, so yeah, it has to be an ongoing way of life. What would you say to somebody who's wondering, have I truly repented? Yeah, well I'd say you need to be careful not to get stuck looking inwardly and to be focusing on your repentance and just thinking, did I do enough yet? because there's a sense in which you're going to have to continue to live a repentant life for as long as you live until you meet Jesus face to face. So um, there's a sense in which um, we can sort of get stuck in a rut when we keep looking inwardly at our own repentance. And it's important not to put your faith in your repentance, actually. Uh, to put your faith in Jesus. And it's actually um, the kind of repentance that we need is a repentance that comes from faith. You can't separate the two things. Uh, faith in Jesus means what? It means you're trusting Jesus for what? Trusting him to save you from your sins. That means forgive you, but also it means to move you out of a path of sin into a new path. Trusting Jesus means that you don't want to just get stuck in sin anymore forever. And so implicitly faith in Jesus, saving faith, means trusting him to get away from your sin. And repentance comes from faith because it's not just about willpower, it's not just about hating your own sin because you don't measure up to your own standards. Um, repentance comes from a sense that God is good. God has given me promises. He's given me hope in the gospel. Jesus died for me. He rose again. This inspires repentance because there's hope. There's a new way of life by the Holy Spirit that's offered to us. And so repentance comes from faith. To close our conversation, I wanted Pastor Chris to give us some insight into what true repentance looks like versus a false repentance. I think it's really helpful to think clearly about this because there are um, ways of responding about your sin that you might think is repentance that's not. Um, what you might call fake repentance or, or non-true saving repentance would be um, something like where you're just not measuring up to your own standards. So you're looking at your way of life or certain behaviors and you're saying, I wish I was better at that. I wish I didn't do that. I wish I would get rid of this habit in my life. And you're just feeling bad about not measuring up to your own standards. That's, that might be a sincere way to be, but that's not necessarily real repentance. Real repentance comes from a sense that God is holy. God is pure. God is filled with light and love. And I have sinned against God. And that's wh why I'm grieving my sin here. And so there's a more of a Godward aspect to it. And again, it's not just feeling bad about your sin, but there's also a real repentance that comes from saving faith. It involves a sense of hope 
that God is a merciful God. And so we come to God as Christians, uh, not just feeling bad about our sin, but believing that God will give us his spirit and will walk with us through this journey of life. So real repentance uh, shows itself in fruit. It shows itself in positive change in that you're going to start moving towards God. You're going to start loving God. You're going to start um, loving other people. And um, it's not just that you get stuck in a path of just hating yourself. That if, you're, if your end point is just hating yourself, that's not real repentance. Um, joy comes out of real repentance. It was a great joy to chat with Pastor Chris on a topic so foundational to the gospel, yet a topic often overlooked or neglected. It's important to study, learn, and explore biblical theology as we seek to walk as disciples of Jesus. If you have not repented for your sin and placed your trust in Jesus, do it today and begin to follow Jesus as a disciple. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and share it with a friend. And also you can subscribe if you're interested in watching more videos like this because I'm putting new ones out all the time. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.